good evening everyone uh, we'll begin with today's webinar uh, my name is shavika today's webinar is brought to you by vardhana and today's topic is how schools can uh, like strategize to support student mental health uh, so today's focus would be uh, student mental health so before we dive deep into today's webinar topic and understand what we'll be covering today i would like to share two guidelines with you so let's uh, move ahead and understand what is uh, what do we have for today's agenda so today we'll start with an introduction and a bit of session objective understanding mental health and some common issues or uh, role of school in supporting uh, mental health issues of uh, children and uh, factors affecting uh, uh, mental health of uh, students identifying mental health issues and strategies to support also assess student mental health so this is uh, a crucial part uh, along with a uh, targeted intervention followed by vardhana programs and feedback and closing so let's uh, start with a quick round of introduction so here i'm going to launch a poll to understand your profile participant profile so please opt for your responses i'm going to wait here for 20 seconds uh, please go ahead and vote uh, your participant uh, your profile i'm going to launch the poll results here so most of the people who have joined uh, us today are teachers and some are coordinators and school leaders uh thank you for joining uh, uh this uh, session is equally valuable for school leader as well as teachers and coordinators so let's move ahead and understand today's objective so today we'll be focusing on increasing understanding of mental health which is crucial its importance and equipping school and leader and teachers with strategies to maintain mental well-being of the student in school or also support it also we'll be focusing on learning identifying the mental health issues how you can identify it in the school and some strategies targeted strategies to intervene if required so let's move and uh, understand what is mental health but before i start with it i would like to hear it from you that uh, like what do you think what is mental health if you want to share you can put it in q and a section or uh, you can also raise your hand and share what is your understanding of mental health anyone wants to share okay so mental health is a state like mental uh, a state of well being your mental well being and uh, it's defined like as per who definition if a person is uh, able to cope with different emotions stress uh, like uh, function to their potential or uh, realizes their ability uh, then uh, the mental state is considered to be good so you can say that the person has good mental health uh it comprises of your emotional psychological and social well-being how you are functioning in different area of your life how you are perceiving things how you are thinking what is it like how you feel and even if you are feeling overwhelmed how you are coping with it so that is uh, related to your mental health so in uh, health triangle we have three things that is physical social and mental and generally a lot of attention is given to your physical health and social health but not a lot on a mental because there's a lot of taboo attached to mental health or even talking about mental health uh, and we all know that nep is putting a lot of emphasis in, uh, in uh, for including uh, uh, socio emotional learning uh, in the curriculum also like uh, encouraging school to like ensure that uh, the socio emotional health of students are, are like good so uh, we clearly know that mental health is crucial Uh, so let's start with a quick activity here. Uh, I'll request you to list down three type of mental health issues that you see in your student, you are aware of, or you see someone going through it. So, what sort of mental health issue among student uh, you are aware of? Yes, yeah, someone write a state of well-being. How a person is able to cope with uh, different things in their life. Yes, sound and taking decision, feel to be happy in whatever he do. Yes, and not. Uh, even happy then still ability to cope and manage okay someone wrote uh, hyper activity yes uh, hyper activity uh, as uh, can be a mental health issue sometimes you just think that a uh, kid is charged and that's why a uh, kid is uh, behaving in certain way but hyper activity can also be a sign of mental health issue thank you revithi ma'am anyone else wants to share i have got only one responses like let's down three things or three uh, mental health issues you may have observed in uh, your school students got some more responses let me just issue in facing uh, in family causing yeah 
it can be biological uh, and can be passed uh, from generation to generation. Anxiety, yes, anxiety is like one of the common mental health issue uh, which student face depression, yes, unable to decide, uh, not always unable to decide. Uh, again, it's not unable to decide, it's mostly unable to concentrate uh, or getting easily distracted can be ADHD. Panic attacks, yes. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, whatever you have mentioned in the uh, Q&A section, it's uh, correct uh, to a great extent. So let's see uh, some of the common mental health issues which we see in student. First is anxiety. Anxiety is one of the most common mental health issue kids, adult, and everyone face in today's life. Uh, because uh, like we are living in this constantly uh, changing world and environment and some of us struggle to cope with that change. So what is anxiety? So anxiety is feeling of fear or, or uneasiness. You can just feel that uh, you are like suffering some heart palpitation. You are not able to control your emotions or panicking at uh, some point. Sometimes there is nervous back, uh, breakdown because of anxiety. So the feeling of un uh, uh, uneasiness and excessive worry. Uh, if a child is afraid of, so for example, uh, as a student, I may not have done my homework, but if I'm extremely worried about not doing my homework, I'm refusing to go to school, uh, my absenteeism is increasing, then this can be uh, due to anxiety. The anxiety I'm uh, like facing as a student uh, that I'm not able to cope up with the fear of even like uh, getting scolded by, by my teacher that, uh, you know, uh, the homework is not done. So, uh, like, uh, so you'll see that anxiety uh, can be observed in any form, and other uh, like in bits and pieces, uh, people who go through anxiety showcase it. So uh, sometimes uh, there are physical uh, evidences of anxiety. You can see a kid sweating, feeling restless, nervousness, or tense when they're going through anxiety. And the other is depression, uh, which you have mentioned already. So if a feeling of persistent sadness, so we all feel sad at some point in our life, but how long that sadness is there, like for how long I'm going to like sit and hold it and at one point I should let it go. So if a person is feeling a constant sadness without a very like logical reasoning that why that's what is the cause of that sadness and lost interest in daily activities. So for example, like if a child is sleeping throughout the day, or uh, again, uh, like consistently, irrespective of uh, in which environment you're putting them, they're persistently feeling sad. There's a possibility the child is showing depression. Also, sometimes anxiety and depression is interlinked. So many times, uh, anxiety is something you're uh, like hyper, you're active, uh, like you're um, like going through multiple emotions, and that's exhausting. So it's evident, and there's a lot of research which shows that if a person is suffering from anxiety, for a longer duration, there's a, there are high chances that they'll slip in depression because once they feel exhausted, low and other thing, then uh, there would be this phase of persistent sadness, uh, inactiveness starts. So oh, like that's one thing. So there's a possibility a, a kid may show sign of anxiety for some duration and then start showing sign of depression. So uh, it's not that if a person is sad for a day or two, it's natural uh, human tendency to uh, get an impacted, feel sadness. But if it's persisting for more than two weeks uh, and constantly, if uh, you are observing that, uh, then uh, there's, there are high chances that the child is slipping in depression. Uh, the other is obsessive compulsive behavior. This is a uh, disorder uh, which is re recurring thoughts, unwanted uh, things that a person is doing or having the sensation of fixing things or obsession towards something as OCD. And uh, this is observed in a lot of people post pandemic they, that they have developed this habit of constantly washing their hand, taking extra precaution uh, to fight the germs, which have a lot of health consequences, like uh, doing anything in like uh, anything in excessive is not good for your health. Uh, it's same with uh, washing your health, uh, hand multiple times. But many of uh, many of the people have developed this OCD, uh, and then you can also see the OCD related to cleanliness. Like some, there are some people who want uh, very like they want everything clean. Uh, like uh, there's like many times people do not have even cope of making mistakes. Like they just want it in the way they want it. Uh, so uh, they they're just obsessed about their ways of doing things. 
and they try to get and like fix things uh, as per their need. Uh, so uh, these are three common issues. Uh, the other common issues which are generally seen in teenagers. So if you see uh, and if you try to like understand, you would not see a lot of uh, mental health issue thing uh, in uh, like uh, teen, uh, early uh, childhood uh, students. Like if you see a KG, uh, uh, UKG student, primary section student, they're not that impacted or bothered because that's the time they are still figuring out their emotions. And if you're able to shape the emotions effectively in the pre-primary section, then uh, they'll have more resilience growing up uh, and they'll have more uh, or better uh, way of uh, coping with their emotions. So uh, like uh, like most of the health, mental health issue, uh, like which you can understand and start observing is uh, in teenagers and adults. So addiction is one of them. When a kid is growing, uh, uh, they can have a compulsive need of or any uh, form of uh, like uh, habit, uh, which uh, they think that it's Im important to do, uh, like they cannot live without it. It can be uh, addiction of e even like uh, eating. It can be uh, eating sugar. It can be addiction of uh, smoking. It can be addiction of even tea or or watching television. Like there are a lot of uh, kids who are obsessed with playing uh, video games or games on phone. So it can addiction can be in any form. So if there is a constant need of doing something and a person is not able to withdraw by it willingly or draw the boundary that it's unhealthy, then it's addiction. A uh, suicidal tendency and self-harm, this occurs when uh, teenagers mostly, they struggle to cope with the emotion. They don't know how to handle it. They do not have a support system to go and get the support. And that's the time th where uh, they start feeling that there's no one, even if I'm not there in this world, uh, nobody will uh, be get, get affected by it. So uh, the, it's, it's important to build that self-esteem in the student uh, so they know that they are worth it uh, and there are people who care for them and uh, their life matters. So that's also suicidal tendency is also one thing which students start showing, but this also followed uh, through either anxiety or depression. So if you see the pattern, it's mostly these. So if you're able to identify it at an early stage where you see that a a kid is anxious or depressed, then uh, these suicidal tendency and self-harm can be easily uh, cope. Uh, and uh, self-harm is an uh, act of harming their own body. When a kid go through excessive emotions and then they don't know how to balance it, they want to take out that emotion somewhere. And that's like feeling the pain is their way of taking out that emotion. And that's where they start doing self-harm. So if you're seeing any kid uh, harming themselves, uh, then uh, like the kid uh, may be uh, the high chances that the kid is going through uh, some mental health issues. Uh, the other is which is quite common in Indian context, but oftenly ignored is op oppositional defined behavior. Sometimes we just think that maybe the household environment is not that great and the kid is just moody or spoiled kid. And that's why the kid is uh, throwing a lot of anger, irrit showing irritability or uh, like arguing on unnecessary things, but it's also a sort of mental health issue. So again, a kid doesn't know how to express the emotion. So they try to give it different shapes, form, and try to take it out as per their understanding. So if you help them to learn and cope with their emotions better, then you would not see a lot of these mental health occurring. So uh, these are some of the mental health issues uh, we have covered. So let's discuss one thing that uh, whatever we have covered, like six mental health issues we have covered. Have you or anyone you have experienced any of these issues? Um, have you seen it around yourself or you may have yourself experienced any of these issues? Anyone wants to share? You can put it in Q&A or you can raise your hand. Teens with excessive mobile usage. Yes, uh, that, and that can be... Uh, OCD or a part of defined behavior where a kid is like drawing the boundary and like doing things to irritate parents or teachers. Okay, I think uh, this is uh, like quite personal. If you do not want to share any of your experience, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, but let's move on and understand that what are some of the common factors which are impacting mental health issues. So far, we have covered what is mental health issues and what sort of common mental health issues are there. Let's understand why 
uh, students or uh, children are facing these mental health issues so there are broader four factors there are many actually but i'm going to uh, like cover and uh, get, i have categorized it into four category one is biological so it can be due to hormonal changes again puberty uh, hormonal disbalance teenage uh, struggling uh, with their changes their body uh, is changing and uh, uh, like there's a lot of uh, changes in their body and they struggle to cope with it so uh, one reason can be this other can be neurological so if there's something which is in their uh, in their genetics so sometimes it's also passed down to the students so sometimes you do not have any control over these things other is physical so if a person is feeling through sleep like a person is uh, not getting enough sleep uh, sleep disorder is there if as a child i'm constantly sick i can have anxious about falling behind in the classroom or if i suffer an injury i may feel that oh, oh me or maybe i won't be able to do as good as other students are doing at this point or sometimes we are nutrition so our body and brain needs a lot of food but if the nutrition is not proper uh, then that will impact uh, like my physical impact uh, health will impact my mental health so uh, like this is one of the factor the other is social so if you see most like most of the uh, mental health issues uh, is rooted in these factors but social plays a major role where we don't pay a lot of attention to or we do not have proper mechanism to address it that is a body image issue like uh, people constantly uh, making you question your body that uh, maybe it's not fitting the uh, beauty standards or myth people have created and especially in india like you cannot be too fat or too thin uh, uh, kids uh, follow bully culture so that's always say, uh, like uh, in psychology this all like most of the time it's evident that a person who has been bullied in their life end up bullying others uh, because uh, they normalizes the behavior of it so as a student if i have uh, been hit like if my parents are hitting in school it would be like maybe a normal thing for me to hit another kid so maybe uh, bullying can be done by parents, their own family, or neighbors, teachers, anyone, right? So uh, it's evident that a person who has themselves gone through some sort of bully end up bullying other people. And then uh, many people also fear this peer pressure, not fitting in the circle, not being accepted. Digital media is again creating a lot of body image issue, a lot of intellectual uh, related issue, like people start questioning whether uh, they know things or not are they like uh, dumb or uh, they're good enough or uh, there's social exclusion which can be uh, because of caste class gender there's a lot of family conflict so how this society and uh, like people around a child is behaving also contributes to their mental health so if you give a good uh, like a social environment the, uh, and nurture a kid in a good social environment then there are high chances that uh, they're uh, mental health is gonna be uh, like good and as a school you may not be able to play a lot of role in physical and uh, biological uh, mental health related issue but definitely like social is something you can cater in your school other is psychological uh, they can be multiple things but if a child is uh, resilient uh, uh, has like the right mechanism to cope with their stress uh, then uh, like uh, even dealing with psychological uh, factors is easy so you can see kids going through a lot of anxiety or feel depression when there's exam or board exam and you also see a lot of people like committing suicide because of this pressure uh, and uh, it's it, it's psychological they feel that they're not able to cope it up cope up with it or uh, any past experiences so for example if a kid may have gone through some form of abuse in childhood and uh, or violence if a kid is brought up in a violent environment if they see uh, anyone else doing the violence uh, that can impact them and their mental health uh, physical or sexual abuse um, is again uh, has long-term impact on children uh, so it's important to safeguard them uh, from uh, these abuses as much as possible or at least make them aware that how to identify if they are going through something so that will also help to protect their uh, psychological uh, mental health so these are four major factors which impacts a student mental health social and psychological of school can contribute to a great extent so let's understand that why do we have the sessions at school or like 
what is your role in it and what is your role in students mental health uh, so 50 percent of the mental health condition begin by the age of 14 and 75 percent of the condition developed by the age of 24. so most of the people show their mental health issue any form of mental health issue and between the age of 14 to 24 that is like 70 max like 75 percent uh, remaining 25 uh, may show it post that. So uh, it's important because these students are uh, in the building years of their life. They're at school. At the age of 14, they're at school. They need support. Uh, they need uh, to learn the mechanism to uh, deal with their mental health. Uh, so it's important for school to be equipped with this. Also, National Education Policy 2020 talks about social emotional learning so they are putting a lot of emphasis on including SEL in the curriculum and uh, making it important part of the education because uh, um, the mental health contributes in the holistic development of a student like uh, if a person is uh, if you want them to have a holistic life and uh, face the whole like uh, have the holistic development then mental health needs to be good so Let's understand how to identify the sign of mental health issues. So far, uh, so far we have discussed some of the factors which contributes in school, how you can identify. So first thing, it starts with observation. The emotional changes a child is going through, you can observe it in the classroom as a child. So you may see them excessively worrying about exams or even if there is a shift in uh, teacher. So if there's an old teacher who is transitioning out and a new teacher is taking place, that can also cause uh, like a lot of excessive uh, like worry and fear among students that I'm not, I don't know what would be the teaching methodology. So if you can balance it out, set the context and then introduce. So if you're seeing someone who's not able to cope up with excessive fear or worry, showing fluctuation and more. So most of the people who have good mental health or try to remain balanced or oh, there oh, we all suffer this mood fluctuation but uh, uh, like people with good mental health uh, they know how to balance it out uh, even if they're angry they would not show a, like extreme irritability or sadness or anger publicly uh, withdrawn or sad for a long time again uh, this is sign of depression also if you're seeing someone who's not if there's a like very active and participative student and all of a sudden the student is not participating or not talking or sharing in the classroom or like not not showing that enthusiasm but you also have to be very mindful about one thing there's some introvert and extrovert and ambivert student in the classroom so if a student is introvert and then you're tagging them that who the kid is not participative or showing withdrawn symptoms, that's not correct. But if you are seeing a change in emotional state, so I'm an ambivert student, but all of a sudden I start becoming introvert. So there would be some reason for it. If a kid is frequently crying. When you see pre-primary school a student, they come to school, they cry. Like initially they time to adjust, they're learning the environment. Uh, they are also uh, like dealing with the separation from their parents, uh, which they have got, uh, the company they have got for a longer duration. But if you see that in every small thing, a uh, uh, child is breaking down emotionally, uh, like the tears are coming out, not able to handle emotions effectively, uh, then uh, it can be a sign of a mental health issue. At a beginning stage, uh, these can be sign of beginning stage. I'm not going to go and uh, touch the extremes. Other is behavioral changes. If you see any student difficulty concentrating. So the, there's a difference between distraction and uh, difficulty in concentrating. Sometimes there can be multiple factors in the classroom which are distracting a child. Uh, but if irrespective of what sort of environment, even environment which suits the student who are providing them and they're still facing difficulty in concentrating, uh, then uh, there can be uh, chances that the child is uh, facing some sort of mental health issue and also avoiding school can be due to excessive fear or mood fluctuation. If there's a sudden outburst of anger, as I said, that we all face different emotions, how we are, like how we are showcasing that emotions also play a major role. And that shows the mental health status of a human being. So if there's a certain outburst of anger, impulsive behavior, aggression, unnecessary aggression, if a situation can be sought for, in an effective way uh, and not not by creating a like uh, he walk out of it and uh, 
throwing tantrums if uh, it's delayable and if a still person a person is getting or showing unnecessary aggression towards it uh, then uh, the person may be going through some mental health issue more passive behavior uh, active is more active involvement uh, but uh, a kid is taking the back seat uh, not passive you know, participating avoiding social interaction not making a lot of friends and uh, uh, like uh, not talking to a lot of people and this is like not so what i'm saying is behavioral changes if a kid is behaving like this since the beginning then there's a high possibility uh, they can other uh, kid can be of introvert nature but if you see the kid was happy going mingling socializing talking to everyone well all of a sudden there are changes in the behavior then it can be a sign of mental health issue some of the other signs are uh, hurting self, self-harm tendency, uh, talking about death uh, uh, all of a sudden, or uh, to friends generally. They do not try to come and talk about these things to parents or school teachers. Changing in eating habits, if you're saying that all of a sudden the kid has started losing weight or gaining weight. Uh, so uh, that can also be uh, one of the uh, sign. Uh, frequent headache or stomachache. Many students complain frequent headache and stomachache. And that is coming from the emotional well-being, that they're not feeling emotionally well, which is impacting them physically. So do not let uh, like uh, overlook these signs. Uh, sometimes we just think that it's a uh, like a physical issue, uh, but sometimes it can be mental issue as well if it's recurring in nature. So let's understand some of the strategies for supporting mental health student. Uh, so. One of the strategy which school leaders and teacher can have is establish open communication. It's really important to have uh, open uh, channels for discussion where uh, or set up some forum where, where people can come talk about mental health, the issues they are facing, uh, some of methods to deal with it, uh, like use a social media platform to discuss. So maybe uh, one thing can uh, is giving me uh, anxiety. So, for example, I do not want to do the public speaking, but that's part of my curriculum. Uh, if there's a space where I can just go and say that maybe I'm not comfortable doing this, can someone give me opportunity of doing something which suits my style and which won't give me anxiety? Uh, then uh, that can be done. So, open a forum or a channel of discussion where people can be like vulnerable, speak and share what they want and how they cope, how you can support them. Also, one of the things which uh, impacts student is uh, uncertainty. Sudden, uh, if something uh, comes to them suddenly, that impacts them, that bothers them because they have like five things to handle in their own way. We all think that, okay, uh, maybe we are the one who are coping with a lot of things, but everyone uh, gets, people can perceive and feel different level of stress for uh, everything. Maybe for you, it's just exam calendar, but maybe if a child is not uh, ready, then they may feel overwhelmed. So if keeping things not uncertain, bringing more certainty, regular schedule, share regular updates, uh, um, like make an uh, exam calendar, like tell them in advance. So for example, if there is an exam, I'm, if I'm like creating a calendar one week ahead, and if I'm creating a calendar a month ahead, which would be more uh, beneficial, which will bring me more stress. Maybe in a month, I'll adjust, plan and settle down that, okay, after a month, I have an exam. But if I get a exam calendar, maybe seven days prior to my exam, I may panic. Like, I don't know which subject to focus on, how to prioritize plan. So I do not have a, like sufficient time as a student to do it. So even like we sometimes we do not understand the value of regularly planning uh, things uh, and scheduling things, but it plays a major role in ensuring that, uh, you know, kids are not feeling overwhelmed in the school. Uh, you can uh, talk about the academic pros progress, school events, and also this will help parents to deal with their anxiety. If there's an annual function and if you're asking them to arrange a uh, dress for dancing towards the end, they may have other engagements, right? So that can impact parents' mental health as well. They can also end up feeling uh, like overwhelmed. So it's always important to have regular uh, schedule updates, share it with them. Foster sense of belongingness. So most emotionally safe space we all find is our family because we have the sense of belongingness. We have the sense of ownership. Uh, we know that uh, you know even if things will fall apart in our life, there are certain people who will back us. 
so we need to create similar environment for the student in the school as well where they feel welcome uh, you can just start with a small gesture of maybe uh, wishing them good morning or take them to a cultural trip where they feel that okay uh, their culture also matters they feel included take them in picnics uh, have this informal conversation build that relationship uh, take them on uh, experiential outings these all uh, strategies will be helpful also it's important to create safe space for expression many times uh, children face the issue but they do not share it so you can maybe uh, form a group uh, of their peers or a group lead, lead, led by a coordinator where they they are coming uh, melting down sharing their expressions and uh, sharing whatever they are going through uh, also you can just uh, help them to cope up with the stress by doing some extracurricular activities uh, and also uh, to create a safe space of welcoming and warm and respect plays a major role if a child is feeling respected in the school or in the classroom uh, the child will start feeling the sense of belongingness attachment and uh, ensuring and start feeling uh, that space where uh, they can open up themselves so respect is core uh, for open communication and sense of belongingness uh, other is mental health screening is quite important. Uh, use a tool, um, understand the strength and difficulty of kid is facing. So there's a tool uh, which I'm gonna show, uh, and uh, I'll come to that uh, in the later part. Uh, but I'm like gonna dive deep into it and explain how that tool works. So uh, some of the other strategies for mental health issues develop a socio emotional skill. So teach uh, emotional literacy. What is emotional literacy? Help them understand how they can express their anger even if they're anger. Instead of freezing their voice, they can be rational. They can put their point, have empathy towards the other person. That, okay, if you are feeling others, maybe the person who have said this to you may have their own issues and that may not have something personally to do with you. So many times kids struggle to cope up with their emotion because nobody has taught them how to cope up with their emotion. So you can help them learn how to express their emotion you can create a feeling chart if they are feeling overwhelmed they can go and pick their expression and say okay i'm feeling this but i want to achieve this state how i can do that you can also have emotional check-in points that how you're feeling how much you rate yourself if you're feeling five what you can do to bring your mental health or, or your emotional well-being to seven uh, verbal activity, you can indulge them in role play uh, that can uplift their mood or at least express that what they are feeling. So if you see the counseling, the counseling is process of understanding and unraveling your own emotions. So by creating uh, emotional literacy or teaching emotional literacy, you are helping a child to unfold their emotions. And once they are be able to unfold it, they'll, they have their ways to sort it out. A counselor shows them and guide them uh, uh, through some step, but end of the day, an individual has to do it. So as a teacher, you can also help them to unravel their emotion or at least understand their emotion and some better ways to react to it. Encourage empathy. Uh, so uh, it's, it's easy to react when you are just wearing your shoes. The moment you put yourself in other shoes and see that maybe you are just seeing what is there is the surface level information maybe you're just saying that the child may not have done the uh, homework you don't know that maybe child may have lost someone in the family or, or there's domestic violence uh, which is happening in the family which is impacting the child uh, and uh, even if there is bullying uh, sometimes people uh, feel bad about it but there's a possibility the kid is who is bullying is uh, like being bullied so if you encourage empathy, if you help them to understand, also empathy to understand and forgive themselves. Uh, that also helps to like resolve a lot of mental health issue. You can do this uh, like how you like. So it's, it's, it's a very tricky thing to understand that how you encourage empathy. Uh, maybe you can just role play and show them that how they can show empathy. Or you can just give them some books to read uh, where, you know, there are empathetic stories where the protagonist may have uh, done something uh, which is empathetic in nature and how uh, like the child can also feel encouraged to do something similar and also encourage the act of kindness. So many people who feel depressed, they feel that they're not worthy 
uh, they uh, they're not doing or what they should be doing or they don't full uh, feel fulfilled or satisfied but the act of em empathy and the act of kindness makes you feel that okay you are valued or you have some contribution and you're doing great and that's uh, also a way to cope up with the mental health issue a kid is showing showing a uh, building resilience so for pre-primary section and primary section well, it's the great time to build resilience foster uh, the growth mindset tell them not to uh, you know stick to one uh, thing uh, you have in your mind uh, if you have uh, even as a teacher if you have made a uh, like image about someone uh, that maybe the person is good or bad do not stick to that mindset right look beyond that Oh, like give yourself that time and space and, oh, you know, oh, like empathize with the person and say, okay, okay, maybe this is my perception about someone, but not necessarily that's the reality. So have this growth mindset. People can make mistake, uh, children can make mistake and uh, foster this growth mindset that even if maybe family is doing them wrong, society is doing them wrong, their peers are doing them wrong, they can still choose to like come over, uh, overcome it come out of it, learn from their mistakes. So many times people feel anxious if they do some mistake and they don't know how to fix it. So it's important to forgive yourself and move on and have this foster or like uh, have this growth mindset that, okay, I have done something. I have learned from my mistake. Now move on and ensure that how I can uh, not do it in future. And it's okay even if I'll repeat the same mistake in future. So it's important to have that uh, resilience uh, and faith in yourself uh, that you'll be able to do it and keep moving irrespective of what the situation is. Develop problem solving mind skill. Uh, I encourage a lot of reflection and decision making. Uh, anxiety is again coming from uh, like if, like there are five options to eat from and I'm not able to decide which one to eat, which food to eat. And it can also cause uh, me a bit of anxiety, but I am someone I can make a decision making. Okay, there are five things. There are two things I'm interested in, but today I will go with this. So the moment I'll have a decision making as a student or for uh, scheduling uh, my ex uh, exam or uh, exam preparation, for example, I'm in uh, 10 student. I'm in 10 standard. Uh, I, uh, I'm good at maths, but my science is not that great. So I have decided that I'm going to dedicate three days in studying science and one day for maths. So that's a decision making reflection. I know that this is the problem area I stuck with. How I'm going to do that? So it's important to build that resilience. So a lot of mental health issues can, I won't say completely, uh, you cannot deal with it, but yeah, definitely help to uh, support and uh, overcome some of it. Practice mindfulness, it's important. Incorporate some breathtaking exercise. So every time a kid is feeling overwhelmed or you as a teacher or a coordinator, school leader, we all face things in day-to-day -day life. If you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe do some quick exercise. Or do some uh, breath-taking exercise. Take deep breaths for some time. Maybe if you're feeling that you're really angry and you should not uh, like outburst because uh, we are not only impacting your mental health. You're also impacting the person who's in the receiving end. And uh, you know, children would not be motivated enough to come to your class or study or even focus. So it's important for you as well as children to practice uh, mindfulness. Uh, you can just uh, ask them to count uh, till one to 10. Uh, maybe by the time they'll reach 10, uh, they'll uh, calm down a bit. Or take a minute pause because uh, when you're overwhelmed with your emotions, the reactions can be extreme. So it's important to take a pause, calm it down and then move. So you can help students uh, like do this. You can also include these activities in your prayer time. So maybe you can just say that, okay, let's uh, do three minutes breath taking activity or let's take a two minute pause and reflect what we have done or how we want to react if someone is testing our patients. Uh, count to 10, encourage self-reflection. Uh, it can be done through uh, help them to write journal uh, uh, journals. Like sometimes they struggle to express, especially teenager boys. They struggle uh, not to express their emotions. Girls generally have better uh, social uh, social bond with other people and uh, comparatively more expressive. You can encourage gingering where they can just take out their own emotions, reflect and see how they are feeling and how they can cope with it better. Uh, also, you can help them with short guided meditation. And there are a lot of videos available on YouTube. You can take help of those. 
uh, you can do circle time activities again to help them to de-stress and take out their emotions, uh, realize, reflect, and also empathize and uh, see that everyone is on the same boat. Like I'm not the only one who is suffering. Though people have different uh, problems and uh, the intensity of the problem can vary, but we all go through some things in our life. So these are some of the strategies you can uh, like um, use in supporting student mental health. Uh, but uh, I, as I've said that uh, we'll uh, try and focus a lot in today's session is how to assess it. Because it's one of the biggest struggle, like uh, along with observation and all, how you can have a proper record to it and a proper plan intervention to do it. So I'm going to launch a poll here to understand like, uh, do you agree that uh, it's important to assess a student mental health issue? I have launched the poll. I request everyone to please vote. Okay, I'm going to publish the result. Uh, there are limited votes I have got, uh, but that's still sufficient to make the conclusion that yes, it's important to assess the mental health of the student. Uh, and let's uh, move and understand how you can do that. Uh, so I would like to share two things, uh, like uh, when I'll be showing the analysis to you so here uh, this is the tool uh, and you can use this tool to uh, assess your students mental health and uh, if uh, a child is below at the age of 11 then uh, you can do it for themselves even if they are above 11 you can do it by yourself or you can ask them to take this mental health assessment and then uh, analyze that uh, how they are doing so I'm just quickly going to take you through this, uh, some of the questions which we have in uh, this uh, as, uh, assessment tool is uh, name, grade, uh, teacher name, uh, can say uh, like whether, uh, so, and there are three options mostly. That is not true, somehow, uh, somewhat true and certainly true. So uh, one of the question is considered of others people feeling. Uh, if a student is considered of, uh, considerate of other people's feeling or not, Feeling restless, overreactive, cannot stay, stay still for a longer duration. Often complains of headache, stomach ache, or sickness. Shares readily with other children, whether they're comfortable sharing their stuff with other children or not. Often has temper tantrum or hot temper. Rather solitary, uh, tends to play alone. Uh, generally obedient, usually does what adults request. Uh, many worries often seems worried. Uh, helpful when someone is so they have positive sentences as well, like many worries, but often seem worried. Uh, it's not impacting the child a lot. Uh, helpful when someone is hurt, upset, or feeling. So these uh, questions are broadly uh, like categorized in five buckets. There are 25 questions in this tool, and these buckets are pro social, whether a child is pro social or not. How is uh, like social interaction, emotional interaction, hyperactivity, uh, how is the conduct in the classroom? So you can use this tool. We're going to share this with you. Or you can use this tool or make a copy of it and then use it uh, for your student. And or you can assess. Now I'm going to show you the analysis of the tool. So once the data is collected, here you can see the responses. Uh, you can create the sheet. We are also going to share the uh, data analysis sheet with you here uh, the responses are here like for uh, considerate of other people's feelings certainly true restless overreacting cannot uh, stay still for longer not true about this x y z student uh, often complaints of headache not true uh, shared so the data will be stored here and then there's a matrix so i'm going to explain you the matrix quickly uh, I have opened the sheet uh, so you can quickly see the responses here. Certainly true, not true for question number two. Often complaints of headache, not true. Shares readily uh, with other children, certainly true. So uh, let's see the analysis part of it. Uh, so here we have a matrix. Uh, as I said, that there are four scale, five scales which uh, the questions are divided into five things are measured. These are the questions from the particular uh, like uh, uh, segment or uh, that emotional problem. Uh, these questions fall under those buckets. Question number three, 18, eight, uh, 13, 16 and 40. And there are certain scores assigned. So that is not true. Somehow uh, somewhat true and uh, certainly. So uh, somewhat true is always one or uh, rated one. 
uh, certainly true and not true can be interchanged depending on the statement. So here you can refer to those statements uh, where it's uh, certainly true or not true. So question number seven, it's not true. That means it's a positive statement. Uh, so wherever there is positive statement, then it's not true for the student. So now I have filled the form for one student. Here you can see the responses. Now I'm going to pull their matrix here. So for example, student X, Y, Z, they have scored in question number three. The score is zero. That means not true. Question number eight, the score is one. That means some, uh, somewhat true. 13, 0, not true. So you can scale, uh, you can write their score here. And you don't have to do it every, like you can maybe do it for one student a day or maybe one student in two days. Uh, you can uh, like time it out, pace it out uh, and uh, do this, take this assessment. Or you can also take this assessment as per the need. So if you're seeing, if you're observing that there's some issue with uh, a child which is happening, uh, you can select uh, maybe five, six children from every classroom and do this assessment uh, for them. Uh, this is uh, totally up to you, how you want to utilize this tool. So here, if you see the score, hyperactivity is an area where the child is showing a lot of sign. So uh, child uh, is hyperactive. They have scored three uh, in hyperactivity. Here also, this, uh, each section has zero to 10 ratings. So if someone is scoring zero, that means the score is good. But if someone is scoring 7, 8, 9, 10, that means the area needs attention. So here the uh, child has scored 3 in hyperactivity. That means hyperactivity needs attention. So uh, you'll get access to these tools. We'll be sharing it with you in the handouts. Uh, do you utilize this tool, analyze, and uh, you'll be able to see that which area you need to focus on. Now let's come to some of the targeted interventions. Uh, so uh, we have seen the tool, uh, the question I have five uh, areas covered uh, and uh, then the analysis, how you can analyze that uh, in which uh, area out of five the child is struggling. Uh, let's uh, understand some of the strategies for targeted intervention. As I said that uh, four things, uh, there are five, pro-social is a good thing. So if a kid is showing pro-social sign, that can be dealt. But four things which you need to focus on as social, emotional, how they're doing with peer, what is their conduct and behavior. So some of the targeted interventions. So for example, for hyperactivity, we know that uh, hyper uh, we need to deal with the child and uh, the child is showing hyperactive behavior. What can be some of the targeted intervention for the same? And I'm going to cover it for all the four buckets. So uh, let's start with emotion. Like if a sign, uh, a, a child is showing emotional signs uh, of or like not having a great mental health issue, in that case you can have established or like you can establish care, uh, expectations, certain routines for them so that they don't feel overwhelmed or uh, they take time process it and cope with it. Create a daily routine that will help them to process and manage their emotions better and not freak out. Uh, teach emotional regulation, uh, which I've already uh, covered earlier as it, that how to express their emotions, how to deal with their emotion if they are feeling overwhelmed. Uh, you can indulge them in some breathing exercise, counting till 10, have emotional chart where they can define that how they are feeling. Also implement some break spaces, create a space in the classroom where they can go and calm themselves down when they are feeling overwhelmed. If they try to process their emotion from one place, uh, maybe uh, that can uh, backfire or go negative. So give them that space, create that space where they can go release their emotions and come back. A uh, model emotional responses show how uh, they can. So even if I'm angry, I can tone down and express my anger. So you can help them to express their emotions in better way and better form. Even if like I'm not happy or satisfied with something, how I can make still make the conversation productive and ensure that at the end, uh, like I'm leaving the person motivated, not demotivated. So I uh, help student uh, like do this and that can be done through modeling uh, that behavior. Uh, the uh, some of the other uh, targeted intervention which you can have is involve student in classroom making rule. So many times students breach the rule when they don't feel like included or they themselves don't form it. So if you think if there's a lot of like uh, backfire or children are not listening, ask them to set up the rule. Ask them how they want to do it. 
what would make them or their life easy then they will follow through it and they'll also be more motivated in the classroom to learn use positive reinforcement it's really important praise them reward them uh, sometimes when any uh, conduct issue happen when children feel neglected or ignored or they they're not getting the attention they need so in that case uh, they like uh, have this conduct related issue so praise them reward them uh, also give explicit behavior instruction so sometimes uh, we think that we are saying we want it in this way and that's sufficient maybe kid didn't was not able to break it in different chunks and understand and that's why you are facing this behavioral issue classroom disruption and again and again be very explicit in your behavior so for example i want you to speak uh, you do not start like stand you all of a sudden you don't start uh, like you all don't stand and start pushing asking question be explicit uh, in your instruction that you know if you want to raise something wait for me to end this raise your hand when i'll allow you to talk then you talk so this is explicit explicit uh, instruction to the student instead of saying that nobody will talk or, or you can share whatever you want so mention that how do you want them to express it and again you can demonstrate it or uh, use use consistent consequences so to fix a conduct not punishment but definitely consequences for the, their behavior uh, so ensure that uh, a kid is not uh, and uh, consequences uh, it needs not to be harsh right because once a kid will uh, like develop the resentment it would be very difficult for you to shape them uh, so there would be uh, like ensure that there are some consequences but not too harsh consequences uh the other is hyperactivity this is one of the common issues which you see with student uh, so you can uh, like you know that the a kid is there who's constantly yelling shouting running from one place to another place and incorporate some frequent movements for them tell them that uh, you know let's do some movement activity which will help them to like regulate their energy and indulge and take out that energy uh, and by doing some movements uh you can also give them stress ball uh, using which uh, they can deal uh, with their energy writing on the board constantly keeping them engaged so they, they would not have that time to like sort of create the uh, distraction and other stuff in the classroom uh, provide opportunity for physical activities so if a child is hi hyper actively charged then you have to constantly engage them so you can give them some physical activity exercise assign classroom job maybe you can just tell them that collect everyone's homework copy bring it to the staff room or can you just maybe uh, get my lesson plan from the staff room give them responsibility accountability and also engage their energy uh, provide choices and flexibility uh, like um, again these are distracted kids uh, create a lot of issues in the classroom help them with things and how they want to work so maybe uh, instead of if you will give them a uh, homework of three pages of you will ask them to read two topics maybe instead of that doing give them one paragraph make it easy for them or you can just say that you know maybe uh, read one paragraph take a five minute break or uh, read another so you are helping them to cope up with the energy also taking the necessary break and study as per their choice that will also help to manage their hyperactivity give them flexible assignments or uh, maybe it can be a mixture of audio visual it can be uh, some project based uh, homework so be creative in that approach and also implement uh, attention focused strategy uh, also have some uh, attention grabbing strategy in the classroom when every you see uh, they are distracted break their uh, task in chunks because every time a child will feel overwhelmed uh, like they'll start distracting others so start uh, creating issue in the classroom so just ensure the child is understanding what they have to do so they'll be able to do it use a lot of visual cues to keep them engaged give them hands on learning other is a uh, peer related intervention establish a positive culture ensure that there is no bullying there is a very strict no tolerance pull policy towards bullying and also encourage reporting uh, teach can conflict resolution skills uh, that okay even if there is a conflict instead of withdrawing so if two students are fighting because of anything how they are fighting uh, how they are coping with it and uh, even if they have fought how to resolve that conflict instead of sitting and uh, pondering on it and not moving on it, have the growth mindset uh, have the uh, conflict resolution skill 
and also instead of blaming others start with i that uh, what i have done wrong how i can fix it what other person has done that that has to do with that person it has nothing to do with me right so my behavior as a student should not be evolved or changed uh, because of someone else it should be i should be the res uh, responsible one uh, for changing uh, that encourage cooperative learning uh, include more and more group learning and group rotation and discussion because sometimes kids also feel comfortable in a group so it's important to rotate their group and address bullying uh, so we have seen the tool how you can identify an issue and these are some of the targeted intervention in those four buckets uh, which you can use to cater to uh, so let's go and do a quick case study like whatever we have covered so far let's see uh, like uh, how much we have understood or uh, like use your reflection and participate. Uh, so I'm going to present a case here uh, that is of Rama. Rama is an eight year old student in third grade. Uh, she frequently throws tantrum in the classroom. Uh, her outbursts usually occur during transition between the activities or when she is asked to complete challenging tasks. So not able to cope. Uh, these tantrums involve loud crying, throwing objects, and sometimes refusing to follow teachers, also impacting other student and teacher. These incidences disrupt the class and uh, after uh, and affects Rama's learning in the progress uh, because of over uh, emotional overwhelmingness or overwhelming she's feeling. So here I want you to reflect and share with me that which mental health issue is Rama dealing with. We have covered four type of uh, like four broad buckets uh, of mental health issue. What do you think? Which mental health issue Rama is uh, dealing with and what strategies you can use? Okay, so I'll just do one thing. I'll just share some of the key uh, concerns here which uh, Rama is showcasing. Uh, she's overwhelmed during task or transition. So during task or transition. So if there's a sudden thing which is coming to her, then she's uh, feeling overwhelmed. Uh, she's throwing tantrum, uh, which is causing disruption in the classroom and affects her and her peer as well as the teacher. And her academic performance and social interaction is also affected. So nobody wants to talk to someone who is always grumpy or uh, not showing the class appropriate behavior. So these are the key concerns. So which bucket you think uh, that like the four uh, mental health issues we have covered as uh, social uh, hyperactivity, conduct, and PO, which is the, which is Rama's struggle uh, area, which emotions she is showcasing. You can share in uh, Q&A section, hyperactivity, okay. Uh, but here the uh, Rama is more scared, right? She is uh, second one, uh, second one is conduct. Okay, yeah, definitely some conduct issue she is showing. But what is the issue she is struggling to cope up with to uh, like show these uh, behaviors? Sensitive. Okay, yeah, sensitive. Somehow related to emotion. So here Rama is coping to deal with her emotional issues. The stress she is getting, she is not able to cope up with her emotions. And that is coming out in the form of outbursts. So some of the strategies you can use is help her to regulate her emotions. Help her to do some exercise, go to uh, the uh, calm corner, calm herself down and then come back. Uh, implement some break space, uh, again, creating some calm corners for her and model em emotional responses. Then even if she's feeling overwhelmed, what she can do? Maybe she can sip some water, she can talk to a friend or, or you know, she can also express what sort of emotion she is feeling. So these can be some of the uh, like strategies which you can use to help Rama deal with her emotional issues, uh, which she is showcasing. Let's see the other uh, case study. So Rahul, an 11-year-old sixth grader, displays a sign of uh, hyperactivity in the classroom. He often has trouble staying seated, interrupts the teacher frequently, and taps his hand or feet constantly, and has difficulty focusing on tasks for extended period. His behavior disruption uh, disrupts lesson and impacts both of his own learning and that of his peers. So here, which mental health issue Rahul is dealing with? But before we jump to that, I'm going to share the key concerns from the case study. That is, Rahul is not able to sit still and focus on the academic progress. 
uh, there's frequent as interruptions and there's a lot of physical uh, activity. He's showing uh, doing a lot of physical activity, which is disrupting the classroom. And his behavior also leads to different social challenges. Of, uh, and his peers are also getting impacted and getting frustrated. So again, uh, I'm going to ask the same question that which mental health issue you think Rahul is uh, suffering from? It's, it's quite simple. It's already in the case. Yes, hyperactivity issue. Clearly here, um, it's not completely emotional. It's um, hyperactive, though emotional uh, issues are also involved there. It's part of it. So Rahul is dealing with hyperactivity uh, as per the targeted intervention we have discussed. Some of the intervention strategy here can be incorporate frequent movement. Instead of Rahul standing up and uh, having this urge of moving, you can just schedule it for the kid. You can just indulge them in an activity where they get to do the frequent movement and in, uh, like incorporate movement activities, stress ball, riding on the board. Uh, some attention grabbing activity if they are getting distracted maybe you can include a video which can help rahul to stay at one place and watch it and study through it uh, break uh, task in uh, different forms and if required or uh, ask the parent to suggest uh, like ask the parents to uh, like get the adhd diagnosed so you so when you understand try to understand and support mental health issue do not jump on any conclusion and do not become the psychiatrist. Just ensure that you are drawing the boundary. You are neither a counselor or a psychiatrist. But yeah, if a child is constantly showing some sign, you can definitely positively communicate this to the parents and in a way where they don't feel offended or blamed or uh, also just break down the mental health myth with them. That it's common uh, and it's uh, like... Uh, there are a lot of taboo uh, attached to it, but uh, you know, uh, the uh, kids need attention, which you as a teacher is not able to uh, cope and support. Uh, so uh, we have covered uh, case studies as well. Let's uh, see some of the additional resources. So as a school, you have limitations. As teacher, you have limitations. But there are certain organizations which are working in the uh, same sector. Uh, like their uh, work is to educate uh, parents, students, teachers on mental health, uh, if required, do uh, online uh, counseling and uh, session uh, to create awareness. So these are some of the uh, like uh, organizations which are working. Uh, these are mostly NGOs except Empower. Uh, and uh, if any you think that there's one student who needs support, you can definitely uh, direct their parents towards this. If you think that uh, they are lacking the resources to get the support, then these organization provides uh, free resources to them and support to uh, the child. Uh, so we're, we're going to share all these things uh, with you in the handout so you can refer to that. Uh, let's move to the summary of what we have covered today. So we have definitely covered that uh, the mental health issues are increasing and it's a growing concern. And there are several factors which are impacting student mental health issue. And school plays a major role in uh, shaping student mental health issue because uh, at when they start feeling and start uh, facing the mental health issue, that's the core time they are at school. Uh, also look for emotional and behavioral changes uh, to identify the mental health issue or identify the patterns which a child is showing. Not necessarily an issue, but if you are seeing some pattern, you can be more observant about it. Uh, and uh, using uh, using of mental health assessment tool, uh, uh, which is uh, which would be quite effective uh, to have a like proper written record that what you're observing and what patterns you're noticing, how uh, a child is scoring. Uh, the strategies to support student mental health in school uh, includes fostering open communication, creating a sense of belongingness, uh, implement screening, uh, uh, focus on building. A, social emotional skill uh, resilience and practice mindfulness and this can be done in multiple ways some of these strategies which we have covered here which are easy easy to use and now i'm going to come to Vartana's partner or uh, program some of the programs uh, which we offer in collaboration with this with Vartana is lead school or uh, that helps to in like uh, do uh, tech-based uh, learning uh, and this will help you to keep a uh, hyper student engaged uh, through different activities and so learning and also through digital medium and uh, the same is with Kyan. Uh, so you can utilize uh, these uh, solutions for your school 
uh, can as a knowledge vehicle it's a multimedia computer uh, projector with a data projector so if you are interested in any of these programs uh, you can let us know uh, so and reach out to us on this uh, thank you for joining us today